Hey everyone, we're going to be going through an art book today. It is Pac-Man, a, a collector's guide by Mark Bussell. This is a really cool book. You get to look at some of the nice pictures, a few pieces from his personal collection, as well as some of the other stuff. Pac-Man is a really long-running video game character. He's one of the first mascots, and this is a really fun book. Like, if you just want to get into Pac-Man collecting, or if you just want to know more about Pac-Man, it's not like a huge comprehensive history of it, but he does uh, go through a lot of the different games. I hope you guys enjoy it, and let me know what you think in the comments. So let's go ahead and look at it. This thing is really cool if you are a Pac-Man collector or anything like that. So it's got a lot of these really great pictures and other fun things in it as well. So if you're a fan of like the arcade games, or if you're a fan of some of the home console games like myself, or just like random Pac-Man merchandise, this is a really cool well, uh reference guide for you to look at, especially since it gives you sort of a brief rundown of everything in it, and, or sorry, a brief rundown of just the history of Pac-Man and everything. So this actually is not the arcade cabinet I normally would have saw. I saw like the, um, I think there was like a top-down four-seater, that's kind of the one that I vaguely remember. But you get to look at just all these crazy things here. Uh, I, I've never seen the beer steins before, but again, I, I'm not a, as huge of a Pac-Man fan as Mark is, apparently, which, you know, is perfectly fine. Yeah, this is pretty much what I used to see when I was growing up. Uh, I played a few of the arcade uh, versions of Pac-Man, but not very many of them. Yeah, th this is just, it's such a cool thing to look at and see all of these just pretty high-quality pictures. I'm sorry, like, oh, God. I'm getting a little bit of glare. Sorry about that. But these are like really cool. Now we get to this. <laughs> get to this one. Um, yeah, Pac-Man on the Atari 2600. I've heard it said in other places, but, and I tend to agree with them, that this game probably caused the video game crash just because they made so many of them. But one thing I haven't heard a whole lot of is uh, how the lawsuits impacted this. So Atari sued the crap out of everyone that was uh, making some of the knockoff games, and we'll get to those. And they just spent a whole lot of money trying to make sure that they were the only ones that could release a Pac-Man game. They lost quite a few of these lawsuits. I don't know exactly how many they won. I know they won um, Casey Munchkin, but I don't think that they won... Um, a few of the others, like Jawbreaker, I think they lost, and a couple of others, but they probably spent a lot of money just fighting to keep the copyrights on these. And, uh, of course they made it for, like, every system out there. Pac-Man was everywhere back in the 1980s. I mean, it was one of the first, like, real mascot games, and it was one of the first that was, like, really marketed outside of just the video game industry. So basically before Mario, you had uh, Pac-Man. I mean, nobody had really come up with a mascot for video games before, and really Pac-Man was the one that sort of started all of it, basically. So yeah, you got your three Pac-Man arcade cabinets. I have never seen uh, Super Pac-Man, though. That is one I, I would really like to know more about. Um, I would actually like to see just some more information just on Super Pac-Man specifically, because obviously I've played Pac-Man, I've played Miss Pac-Man, but I've never looked at uh, Super Pac-Man at all. So yeah, just more on this. Oh gosh, the Intellivision. So it's really cool that he throws in all of them. I mean, you ju can just look at the screenshot for the Intellivision and compare that to the Atari 2600. They look nothing alike. I mean, you... It's still not arcade quality, but you have the colors there. The pellets actually look like pellets. It's just leaps and bounds ahead of it. The only problem is you have that crappy controller for the Intellivision. That's the only huge problem with it. And then, God, and even look at like the Atari computer screenshot. This one just, it's, there's no comparison with the 2600. It's really amazing that they let that one go. Uh, there's some more that goes into that as well, like um, 
the cartridges for the 2600 weren't big enough. They also allegedly, I, th I think it's not really alleged at this point. They did produce the, pr they put out the prototype instead of like a finished game. They just really screwed that one up. They also wanted to make it two player and that ate into the memory pretty heavily. So here's another computer that I never even knew Texas Instruments made their own computer basically. But that's pretty cool. And this, this one is even closer to the arcade. I mean, you have the colors, you kind of have the eyes with the ghosts that are moving around. It looks really nice. And then you have the MSX. This is another one never really looked at, but you got the artwork on here where Pac-Man has his gigantic nose. It's some... Um, it's weird. I don't know why they thought that one up. I think that might be from the Hanna-Barbera cartoon, but I'm not 100% sure. And then you got Tengen, and no, he didn't put the uh, the picture, the cartridge in upside down. Like that's actually the way they look. I don't know why Tengen did that, but if you look at all of their cartridges, they're they put their images like that, and I don't understand why they did it. It's kind of weird. Uh, it does make the end label well, it, the end labels aren't good enough to read anyway, but sort of there's like this uh, tilt in it. So if you were looking straight on, in theory you would see Pac-Man written out, but it's it's not a very good end label. And, you know, Tengen's kind of a weird way of doing things. But yeah, if you can find this one, this isn't a bad port of Pac-Man, but still there are some better ones out there. Yeah, you can see the NES port version. Still leaps and bounds ahead of uh, Atari, even in television. It's closer to the way that like the computers did it, but it's still not quite arcade quality. And then there's the 7800. This is kind of a fuzzy picture for the 7800. I'm not really sure if that's what it looks like. Again, I never played the 7800, so I can't really give you a huge uh, reference point on that. We got some of the handhelds. And I like how he throws the cartridges in here as well, so you can kind of see what you're looking for when you go game hunting. But one side, this is... Uh, <laughs> this is a modified one, so this you wouldn't actually see this on the Game Boy. That one looks a little bit different. I think it's being played on the Super Game Boy. And then we get into some more, just the regular merchandise. That's pretty... I had never heard of 8-Bit Pale Ale. Now I kind of want to try that. It's, uh, I don't know how it would taste. And we got the 3DS. We're still doing into some of the handhelds here. This is pretty fun. Um, yeah, like the dedicated controllers. and Yeah, the good old Dreamcast. I didn't know they came out with that one on the Dreamcast, but I don't have every Dreamcast game. And then we go into the Switch. This is pretty cool if you like change the Switch like this. You can actually play it in a different way. That's kind of nice. Um, yep, on the PS4 you have the arcade hits, it's kind of cool. DS, and a few more of the uh, Atari cartridges, those are really cool. And then Pac-Land, that is one... It didn't come out here in the US, but it is kind of a... It's a very different one, it's a side-scroller. It, it's pretty weird, and again, like they have the big nose box art and everything. I think Pac-Mania actually gets kind of a bad rap. I haven't played the Genesis version. I only have the Tengen, the, uh, well, they're both Tengen, but the uh, NES version. I kind of like Pac-Mania. It's a little weird, but it, it's kind of a cool game. And then, yep, yeah, just more of the cartridges and everything. Uh, but yeah, overall, this is a really fun book. Uh, I think we're gonna, we'll just go into a few of these. Yep, yeah, here we go get into some of the clones here. This is really the fun part about it, when he goes into some of the Pac-Man clones. You have Casey Munchkin, which is a really cool one. Uh, there's a big lawsuit between them, and that was actually kind of a crazy one. Munchman, like everybody was coming out with these back in the day. Shark Attack. I mean, some of them add like a little bit of a difference to them, but for the most, I mean, first of all, this one came out by Apollo, so you can be pretty sure that's going to be terrible. Just, you know, Apollo's not very good. And Sega got into it with <laughs> Fantasy Zone. I actually have this. I should try this out one time. And then Clean Sweep for the Vectrex. 
and lock and chase. This one looks... I'm actually surprised that Data East didn't get sued, because this looks a lot closer. At least the images look a lot closer to Pac-Man, but maybe it's the uh, sprites for the police people that are chasing after you that might throw it off a little bit. Pace car. Just looking through some of these is really amazing. Just the fact that he found all of these and got them all out here. I mean, he, he's probably been collecting a lot longer. Well, he's definitely been collecting a lot longer than I have. Ladybug, which is a pretty fun little game. I've only played it, I think, once. But never played it in the arcade. That might be the way you want to try it. Alien. Um, wonder what this... Huh. Yeah, so this is kind of a movie-based game. That's kind of interesting. Then Mousetrap. And <laughs> Pac-Man 2. I don't know much about this one, but it, this is kind of a cool thing that they actually came out with that. Not to be confused with the Pac-Man 2 that came out uh, much later, I think on Genesis and on Super Nintendo. And then, oh gosh, I never played this one. Future Pac-Man on the CD. <laughs> See? Sega CD32X, my god. That just... <laughs> uh, that would have been horrible. And then we get into some of the other books that he has. 